and now it's my real pleasure to introduce Franca Cade, an expert on midwifery and an advisor on international maternal health with over 30 years of strategy and policy developments, advocacy, leadership, project management, and partnership. She is the current International Confederation of Midwives President. With her anthropological and midwifery background, Franca has lived and worked across a range of differently resourced countries and is well aware of the realities of midwifery practice in various cultural contexts. She is a strong proponent of humanized midwifery care and encourages midwives towards respectful care and a human rights-based approach. Franca was most recently Franca most recently was the strategy and policy manager with the Royal Dutch Organization of Midwives. She is known to many for her work as the twin to twin project manager. Previously, Franca served in the ICM board as treasurer from 2002 to 2008 and on the ICM council as the Royal Dutch Organization of Midwives Delegate from 2008 to 2017. And now I'm going to enable Franca so that she can do her presentation. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. I just want to check with, uh, with you. If I press the arrow, I go through the slides. That's right, isn't it? Yes. Yes, I can see it now. Wonderful. Hello, everyone, and happy International Day of the Midwife. It is uh, such a thrill to be allowed to speak today and, and finalize this last uh, session on the Virtual International Day of the Midwife, which I think is a real, real thrill to do. And I think it's such a wonderful tool. It's been great seeing so many people join. I've joined in a few times today myself, and it's been wonderful to hear. So the pleasure is all mine that I'm allowed to speak. It's a real honor. Um, I would like to talk today about what the International Confederation of Midwives is doing to lead the way with quality care. Because I think that it is the theme that we have, and I find it important to say that what is happening at ICM. And before I say that, I think what's important for us all to realize is when I say ICM, I actually mean all the members because ICM is not the head office in The Hague and it's not me. ICM is everyone. ICM is all the midwives in the world that are members of ICM and all the midwives in the world that are not members yet but will become members. All of us together are ICM. I would really like to thank you all for the great work that you're doing to protect the lives and the dignity of all of us who need us so much. And I think IDM is a really important day to harness our collective power to lead the way for all women and newborns through quality, equity and leadership, which are actually the three themes of our strategy for this triennium. May the 5th uh, is the International Recognized Day for highlighting the work of midwives. And I'm not sure if some of you realize that ICM actually established the idea of the International Day of the Midwife following all kinds of suggestions from midwifery associations in the late 80s. And it was formally launched in 1992. So we've been doing this for quite a long time. We know that uh, midwives who are educated, trained, licensed and regulated to ICM standards um, work within the par parameters of just that we don't work within the parameters of just one situation or one setting or a community or one country. We are able to lead the way towards improved maternal and newborn health outcomes locally, internationally and globally. And we provide appropriate education, counseling, and antenatal care that is adapted to the specific needs of the women and the babies that we serve. So as midwives, we know that leading with quality care means providing evidence-based and people-centered reproductive health care service. And I think it is such an amazing privilege to be allowed to do that. And I've been hearing it today as well in the, rep in the presentations, and I've heard it from so many midwives around us that we feel it's such a privilege to be allowed to do this work. So this uh, 
picture shows us all the places where we have midwifery associations and I think it's also quite good to realize where we don't have a mid midwifery associations and I certainly hope that as ICM all midwives in the world will come and join ICM. So as the global organization of midwives associations we have members in 113 countries now and we represent around about 500 million 500,000, sorry, midwives globally. And uh, we're governed by an international council made up of delegates, and that's from 132 member associations. So that's uh, quite a lot. And as I said, we are all ICM. And just a small reminder about the fact that over 340,000 women and more than 3 million infants around the world die each year from preventable complications from pregnancy and childbirth. And the majority of the deaths would be prevented if we were enough qualified and adequately resourced midwives available around the world. Midwives are skilled to provide 87% of childbirth related services. And it makes us the ideal professional to support women through the whole continuum of care. And it is for this reason that uh, we have this vision, which has been the vision of ICM for quite a while, but I feel that it's just as relevant as it has been for a long time, and it's so simple and basic. ICM envisions a world where every childbearing woman has access to a midwife's care for herself and her newborn. And I think this is such a, I think it's a very profound vision. And we have more and more evidence, and we'll be talking about that later, we have more and more evidence to show that it is actually a woman's right. I believe it's a woman's right to have access to a midwife's care. Our mission supports the vision and we as ICM want to strengthen midwifery associations and advance the professional midwives globally. We want to try to promote autonomous midwives to be the most appropriate caregivers for women and to keep birth normal so that we can enhance the reproductive health of women and the health of their newborn and their families and actually their communities as well. Midwives serve as one of the foundations for achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And here you see all the Sustainable Development Goals and mainly you could look at Sustainable Development Goal 3 which is about health and five, which is about gender equity. And I think we focus a lot on those two, but actually midwives impact all the development goals. And the World Health Organization and several United Nations agencies and other international bodies have identified midwives as key in reducing maternal and newborn deaths and disabilities globally. Actually, midwives yield a 16-fold of return on investment, and it's quite interesting. My young son, I, my youngest child, Benjamin, is 18, and he's been investing in cryptocurrency. And I said to him the other day, you know, Ben, if you had a cryptocurrency that would kind of get a 16-fold in investment, would you invest in it? And his eyes kind of became large, and he said, oh, yeah, mom. Oh, God, if I could get 16 uh, times my investment, I'd definitely do it. And I said, you know invest in midwives. Midwives really have a huge investment, a great return on investment and the ripple effect of improved health outcomes is significant. We know that midwives save lives and ICM recognizes the strategic importance of advocating for midwives to work close to where women live and their families and give them access to equitable quality midwifery services because it's key in achieving universal health coverage. This is just some statistics that some of you will be aware of and others will not, but I find they are so profound and we get more and more and more evidence for these figures. So when empowered and authorized with essential skills, midwives can help avert over two thirds of maternal deaths which is a huge amount. And when we are educated within to international standards and we work with an enabling environment, so it means that we work in the environment whereby we can work to our potential, we are able to take care of 87% of the essential care of women and their newborns. And the midwifery series, the Lancet midwifery series showed that if you increase midwifery in developing countries by 25%, it reduces 
the maternal deaths by 50%. And these are very, very serious figures. I find them really encouraging because we know that midwifery works. And I do actually personally, uh, in my role and, and being at different meetings at the UN and WHO, I do hear people realizing this more and more. People realize that midwives really, really matter. And I find this extremely encouraging. Now, this next slide is just to give you a bit of a view of the strategy of ICM for this triennium. Because this year's theme resonates with the first of ICM's three strategic directions established uh, at the Council in Toronto. So it's quality, equity and leadership. And midwives leading the way with quality care is significant in highlighting the vital role that midwives play, not only ensuring women and the newborns navigate pregnancy and childbirth safely, but also that, we re that they receive respectful and well-resourced maternity care that can create a lifetime of good health and well-being far beyond the childbirth continuum, you know, to go, go throughout their whole life. And of course, we have, we're looking at quality this year, but for all of you to know that next year, we'll be, uh, we will be focused on equity. So it will be midwives leading the way through equity. And the year after that, which will be our ICM Congress year of Bali, we'll be looking at leadership. And I'm sure you realize that even though we are focusing on quality this year, leadership is at the basis of, of quality and also equity is at the basis of quality. Within our ICM strategy, we have looked at certain things that we demand as ICM and certain things that we will deliver as ICM. And when it comes to leadership, we demand the participation of midwives at every single level, at the highest level of policy and decision making. So at the global level, at the regional level, at the local level. And by this, I don't mean that they all have to be top leaders. I think we are all leaders. And I think at every single level you are, we need to take the lead and speak for midwifery. And I really believe that governments need to have midwives at the table because when you're actually employing midwives and increasing your midwifery workforce, you need to have midwives talk about what midwives need to do. So that's one thing that ICM demands. And we as ICM will deliver effective midwifery leadership and expertise. And later on, I'll tell you about the things that we're doing to actually be able to deliver that. Now, as I said, equity is also very, very important when it comes to delivering quality. And in our ICM strategy, strategic objectives, we say that we demand equitable access for midwives to education and regulation and continuing professional development. And we also demand that women have access to midwifery-led midwifery services. And at the same time, we will deliver access to the midwifery associations to ICM. So anything that we do at ICM is there for all of us, for all midwives. And we're working very hard on trying to make these things equitable for everyone. So when we focus on ICM again, on the, I'm sorry, on quality, which is the theme of this year, um, in our strategic objectives, it talks about two things, one thing we demand and two that we deliver. And I'm not talking about delivering as in birth, in this case, I'm sure you understand because that's giving birth. This is what what we will what we will deliver as as midwives, and uh, we demand an enabling environment through which midwives can provide quality midwifery services. And I think this enabling environment is something that is so important. Many many midwives work under circumstances that are so difficult that their potential can't be shown. I think that it, it, you see it at all different levels in all different countries. So some midwives don't have, have water, they don't get salaries, they don't have medication, they don't have anyone to refer to, they uh, don't have any way that their children could possibly go to school. There are all kinds of ways in which midwives are not able to work to their fullest capacity. And I think that midwives should demand that they can work within a good enabling environment. Then what will ICM deliver? Well, ICM will deliver global standards and resources and tools for education and regulation. And I think these are extremely important worldwide to get us to a certain level altogether. And we will also deliver experts on midwifery and midwives that are able to give quality advice to stakeholders. So when we're 
saying that ICM will lead with quality care, what, what do we actually truly mean by that? I think one of the things that we mean is that we all carry on with what we are already doing. I think we need to realize that there's a lot of quality out there which we will maintain. So we will maintain our high quality work globally, nationally, locally. And we already do that in all kinds of ways. For example, we offer support and assist assistance to survivors of gender-based violence. Uh, we produce uh, we provide reproductive health services to adolescents who are often denied access to services at a great cost to their health and human rights. Or we campaign against unnecessary medical interventions. And I think that midwives play a key role in the empowerment of women so that we can build more equitable and sustainable societies. And that's something we are already doing. We provide support and services to all women anywhere without discrimination of any kind. And I think that's, again, something that we have to maintain and be proud of and really stand for together. And of course, we provide women and their families with education concerning immediate and future health considerations like family planning and spacing future pregnancies. So that's what, what we're doing and what we're trying to maintain. Then another thing which I think is very, very important is that we ensure unity in our messaging. And that one is, is something that I think is very important for all of us to do together and that's also the reason why I'm trying to why, why I'm talking about our strategy because I think all of us need to realize what our joint strategy actually is at ICM at the at the council we did decide this together but of course to disseminate and for all of us to feel it and move together is so much stronger and the unity in messaging is extremely important because we need to make sure that people know that the midwifery workforce has to be supported by quality education and regulation and safe working conditions. And we all have to say this time and time again at every level in every single country. I think that midwives, we are the key advocates and supporters of women during pregnancy and childbirth. And it's, this is why, for example, the World Health Organization encouraged every childbearing woman to see a midwife at least four times during her pregnancy. So these kinds of messages do, do get change to happen. Another thing that ICM does is to review and update and expand our resources. Uh, for example, our core documents are updated regularly and our position statements are updated regularly. And uh, at the moment, we're working very hard on reviewing and updating our governance and management structures. So, um, for example, within the board, we are working in a more equitable way, whereby we, for example, represent ICM over the world more equitably. So you will find that, for example, the regional board members of South America, as an example, would actually represent ICM in that region and not, for example, the president or someone else. And that way we're trying to really show our diversity and use our diversity in a wide way. And I think that very similarly that's happening in the office. And so I think in that way we really are trying to adapt to what is necessary in this modern world. And with the small capacity that ICM has, because the ICM head office it's actually only 10 people, so it, it's quite small. We have to really, really be very careful how we use ICM's capacity in that way. So we have to use the capacity of our members. That's half a million people. And I do find that midwifery is really emancipating. I don't know how you look at this, but I certainly see midwifery is really emancipated over the years. And there is so much capacity out there that we can use. And I think as ICM, we are realizing the capacity and we're using the capacity more and more. Then the fourth thing that we're doing con concerning our quality is strengthening our midwifery ed education, accreditation and continuing education. And I think that uh, ensuring effective communication with women is very important so that they can receive care with respect and that it, so that they can preserve their dignity. We need, they need to be provided with emotional support that is sensitive to their needs and strengthens their capabilities. And I think it's extremely important that we strengthen midwifery to be able to do that. And last but definitely not least, I think we need to encourage governments to support midwife, midwives, and we do that through the associations. 
I think healthcare systems must enable responsive and accessible quality midwifery service delivery and midwife scanner must inform policies related to the composition, development, distribution of the health workforce in all countries to reflect the diverse needs of the women who benefit from their care. Um, we all know that midwives are at the heart of quality, equity and dignity in healthcare provision and governments must invest in midwives in alignment with the ICM standards so that women can have access to more midwives and more women-focused care and fewer adverse outcomes for pregnancy and childbirth. And I certainly see that providing women-centered reproductive health services is extremely important and midwifery is vital, a vital solution to challenging and providing high quality maternal and newborn care for all women and newborns and infants in all countries. And we know the evidence, it's in the Lancet, it's in all kinds of documents. One way in which you can actually do that yourselves as well, locally, is through our lobby toolkit. I'm not sure if any of you have actually seen the lobby toolkit that ICM brings out. We have a lobby toolkit for IDM. But we also have a lobby toolkit that comes out in our newsletter every single month. And we've started with that at the beginning of this year. And uh, Midwives Leading the Way with Quality Care Lobby Toolkit tries to concentrate on two aspects. And that's high quality midwifery care for every woman and every newborn. And lobbying for midwife-led care, that that is the first choice for all women. Try to sorry, I'm just going back to this slide because I think that we oh yeah, sorry. When I go back to the lobby toolkit, what the lobby toolkit tries to do is to inform the public about midwives. And I've seen today, kind of looking through Twitter and social media, that midwives are organizing rallies, for example, flash mob marches, public performances, there have been walks. And so in these ways you inform the public about midwives. Social media campaigns, I think, are all also very, very important, and you have seen many social media campaigns today. But and in general, I think midwives are becoming more active on social media. I think it's also important that we increase, increase the awareness of midwifery services. And you have seen a few midwives worldwide that have, for example, offered free antenatal or postnatal or reproductive health services so that women are aware what actually their rights are and what and how they can benefit from midwifery services. And in that way, I think the public is becoming much more aware of what we are able to offer. I think it's also very important to improve the coverage of midwifery issues in the media and certainly through social media. And uh, just before I had last yet yesterday i think it was i spoke to a french journalist and you do see the media being more and more interested in midwifery in general and i think we need to bring out midwifery into the media as a as a strong profession that stands next to women and that is there for women and this will definitely help midwifery to be recognized worldwide i think that midwives are connecting with journalists more and more and also that mothers are connecting with journalists and other people within the media more than they used to, and this certainly helps to profile midwifery. Another thing we need to do is to nourish the support system amongst midwives. I think we need to make sure that we celebrate each other and that we do everything we can to lift each other up, to recognize each other's capacity and to do everything we can to use all the capacity we have and nourish each other. Because I think many of us have hard work, we work long hours, we often have very little pay, and the best we can do is to at least support and encourage each other. Another thing which I think we need to do is to collaborate with healthcare professionals. And again, in the lobby toolkit, you'll find that there's all kinds of tips about how you can collaborate with other healthcare professionals by, for example, bringing together stakeholders. I saw a meeting, I think, of the Moroccan midwives that met stakeholders today for the IDM or organizing social events. You've seen many social events and videos and things like that, whereby collaboration with healthcare professionals makes health, other healthcare professionals more aware of midwives. I think there's also been some attention about uh, for increasing the numbers of midwives. You see that, for example, that some midwives have gone to secondary schools to talk to, to students about the fact that becoming a midwife 
could be something that they would really love to do and help them to understand what it's about and also to arrange meetings with government officials to discuss retention strategies and of course what we all want to do is to achieve policy change and we do that by inviting government officials to panel discussions and things like that and you have i have seen quite a few things today where again there have been government officials present in panels to discuss midwifery and of course to share the findings from different reports that we have like the midwife's voices midwives realities report the state of the world midwifery the lancet series all these reports that we have to try to share them as much as we can so that policymakers can use them and you would be surprised how often it is that people are actually not aware of some of these reports when they could be. So I think it's important for all of us to be aware and to show those people that are able to change policy, the real, the real evidence. This next slide gives you just a bit of a overview of all the information that there is. A lot of this you can find on the ICM website, but if you do want more information, yeah, visit the ICM website. You can also find the ICM strategy there, and it's really worth reading the strategy because I think it gives an overview over the next three years uh, with quality being the focus this year, but the focus on quality, equity, and leadership within these three years, I really believe will bring us further. Um, another report that I think is very, very insightful is the report Midwives Voices, Midwives Realities. Of course, you have the WHO Global Health uh, Observatory data, the State of the Mid World Midwifery Report. And there's also a State of the World Midwifery Report from East and Southern Africa. And some of you might like to know that the State of the World Midwifery Report was done in 2014, but we've just started a new State of the World Midwifery Report, which will come out, uh, which will be launched in Bali 2020 at the ICM conference. I think the Lancet series has had a lot of Lancet series on midwifery has had a lot of uh, impact. And I think, again, it's very important material to read. But also the World Bank health data is interesting. And I think many of us can contact our ministries of health, UNFPA, UNICEF and representatives in your countries, because there's also often lots and lots of local data that you can use. This here is a picture of my granddaughter. It's my youngest grandchild. And uh, I think actually the main thing that I've been trying to say that really helps midwives to give the quality that we need is to be proud of what you are. I am extremely proud to be a midwife and people often say to me, oh, you must be wonderful being the president of ICM. But I really promise you it is so much more meaningful to feel that I'm a midwife and that I'm a midwife and part of a huge midwifery community. So be proud to be a midwife and celebrate the leadership and quality care that midwives contribute to the miracle of birth because a miracle it is. And I think that we should celebrate that together, just like we have done today on this International Day of the Midwife. I want to really thank you all for taking part in the day today and doing all your different activities and celebrations. And I want to thank you even more for the work that you do every single day, 24 hours a day, every single day of the month, every single month in the year, year in, year out for women and babies. And I'm so extremely proud to be a midwife with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Franca. I'm, I'm so touched here at the end of the International Day of the Midwife that I could, I could almost have a little cry because I've, I'm so proud to be part of the international community of midwives. Are there questions oh, I... that Franca might be able to answer for you all? So very quiet. I, uh, but look at the hands clapping over at the side. Okay, <laughs> that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I would like to hear. Can, can everyone still hear me or not? Yes. I was just wondering. Uh, personally, I feel that there is a buzz coming back in midwifery. But maybe it's also I'm 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 very positive. I really do believe in midwifery and I believe that we'll get there slowly but surely together we'll get there. But I am 
seriously feeling a buzz. I would like to hear from the people that are listening now. How do they experience this? Do they feel a buzz coming back in midwifery worldwide or in the countries where they live? Well, that's great. Jane, I see. Yeah. I think it's so important that we do realize it. It's interesting, she says Canada too. Oh, Joy, would you like to use the microphone? Let me enable your microphone. Let's see. Joy. Oh, wonderful. You have a march for mums in Washington on the 6th of uh, May. Wonderful. That sounds fantastic. Joy, are you able to talk now? It's interesting what Tina is saying here about there's a different buzz in New Zealand. But we have to be careful not to lose our way. Yes, I think we do have to be careful of each other and keep each other strong. I haven't been in a, I'm not able to enable joy. Linda, can you help me with that? Or maybe Annette? Oh, Joy, have you enabled your microphone? Up at the top, there's a little microphone icon. Tap it until it turns blue. Needs to, to turn on the red telephone. Yes. We're all saying the same thing now. Mm -hmm. Franca, I can say while Joy's trying to turn on her microscope, her, oh, it has been a long day. I wanted to say turn on her microscope, <laughs> turn, on, <laughs> turn on her microphone, that we've been growing midwifery here in the United States for almost 100 years. And um, I know that Canada is following a, a similar path of Reprofessionalizing midwifery and growing numbers so that it's available to all women. That's that's just wonderful, and I think I think it is happening in many countries. And I know that many countries are also having conflicts at the moment with with other members in the team. But sometimes that's also an indicator of growth. It's an indicator that actually uh, it, midwifery matters. So um, I think that at times, you know, it, it, it disheartens us. But I think it is so important that now midwives stand up and that we don't feel that we are, uh, we, we are vulnerable in some way. But I think we need to stand strong because if we stand strong and move forward in a strong way, we'll really make the change that's been waiting to happen for such a long time. Agreed. Joy, do you think you have sound now? Do you want to ask your question? Yeah. Can you hear me OK? We can. Okay, great. Franca, thank you so much. That was such an inspiring presentation. And I've been writing notes furiously all the time that you've been talking. Um, I wanted to ask you about countries like the UK, because I think there are really encouraging signs in lots of countries, as people have been saying. But I think in our country, uh, midwives have lost the vision for um, what midwives are. And I think we've, we've become complacent because we've had this strong midwifery service, but actually now we are losing some of the things which, which were the foundation stones um, of midwifery. So I was wondering if you could give us some ideas about how we can reinvigorate midwifery in countries where midwives have become complacent and no longer realize what a privilege they have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yet at the same time, I, I can't agree with you that, I mean, I, I'm sure you're, you're feeling these midwives around you who, who are complacent, but I don't think, I think, mid, I think I, actually the UK is doing great because you're developing a lot of academia and I think you need to use the path, you need, you need to use the, 
the door that you have in each situation. And I think in the UK, certainly academia is one part that's extremely strong. I think you have a lot of midwife-led care and midwifery-led care. And yes, I think that when uh, the Netherlands is also an example where things have been very, very good for a long time. So midwives have not had to fight. And sometimes I think, oh, well, you know, maybe Dutch midwives, they haven't had it bad enough yet. And that's why they need to stand up. But you do see midwives standing up and you also see women standing up. And I also noticed that in the UK, I think women are standing up and are saying that they that they want respectful care. And I think things like, for example, the Me Too campaign, it also has something to do with midwifery. And we might not see it that way, but I think in society in general, women are standing up and saying, we are deciding for ourselves what's good for us. And that will have repercussions on midwifery as well. So I can understand what you're saying. And I think it's at times difficult to, to think that your profession is slowly becoming less strong because we are being complacent. But I would look where your strengths are and try to use those strengths specifically Specifically, and the first thing that comes in, into my head is your excellent ac midwife academics and all the research you've done on normal birth, which I think is absolutely excellent. And maybe that would be a, a way in which you could do that. Yeah, thank you. I guess I'm just feeling discouraged because I went to an event today where three women shared their birth stories and they were all dreadful. <laughs> and it really yeah. made me think, oh, are we really that yeah, bad yeah, yeah yeah it's interesting this thing about you know birth about birth stories i think somehow at times certainly again from the netherlands point of view but i think it's in quite a lot of countries it's the same thing that uh, we mustn't get the idea that a good birth means that you give birth at home by candlelight mm -hmm. that doesn't have to be a good birth i think a good birth is a birth where a woman is able to choose the birth that she needs. And she has skilled and loving care. And then you could even have a cesarean section, it can be a good birth. And I think somehow that's something we need to realize as midwives as well, that we, of course, we want to keep birth as normal as possible, but at the same time, a good birth is a birth where the woman is in control. In the end, it's the woman who, we are only about the women, without women, uh, there is not a place for midwives. And I think maybe we need to listen to women more and more. And at times women might say things that we don't like, but we are there for women. So we are going to have to have the dialogue with women and try to understand if we do find it difficult. Can you say something about these birth stories? Why yeah, was it that I, it was so difficult? It was a very interesting event. I, I was at the um, Association of Greek Midwives in the UK. So these are diaspora midwives who are Greek in ethnic origin but who work in the UK and they had invited some Greek women uh, who had birthed in the UK so I think it was it was partly about their experience of uh, the cultural difference and not being understood but it was I think for me it was that the midwives had not tried to connect with the women. There wasn't an emotional connection. It was about ticking boxes. So actually, it wasn't about whether they had a cesarean section or not. It was the fact they didn't feel they had actually connected with the midwives and that they mattered to anybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I think that that's something we need to listen to. And extremely important and maybe it is disheartening but sometimes we need to as midwives be in an uncomfortable space to learn we're also human beings and uh, and I think at times we're under great pressure we know that midwives don't always behave well either and we have to support each other to do that and try I think also to keep standing up straight and supporting each other instead of becoming disheartened or feeling to be victims I do think that's something that has happened in the past that we've looked upon ourselves as victims and we need to stand up and if if we find it uncomfortable what women are saying then we need to have those discussions together yeah thank you franca thank you too joy other comments or questions for franca It's interesting, 
I'm just watching the seeing a comment here about from Celine Lemay. Be careful about the medicalization and sometimes nurse nurseization of the profession. I think when it comes to ICM, I think we very much realise that uh, over medicalization and under medicalization are all the same indicator of women not getting the appropriate care. And in that way, I do feel that the world of midwives is much more connected than ever. Because I think for a long time, ICM concentrated her attention uh, on those women who didn't get enough care, and we are still doing that. But we do realize as well that women who get too much care um, also have an issue. So we, in that way, we can kind of bridge that same problem of too little too late too much too soon together and find that and, and try to concentrate on giving women appropriate care and yes i totally agree with you celine that we have to be extremely care careful about medicalization in general and also medicalization of birth i want to ask Franka, um what do you think we should do about these countries Probably over medicalized, where the midwives are really obstetric nurses, where the gynecologists are being supreme. We help the women and the midwives in those countries. I think it's very, I think it is a very a difficult dilemma because I think the more medicalization you see, the more less able you are to understand that you're medicalizing. At times you just don't see it any longer. And you need practice. You need practice to keep birth normal. I mean, sometimes sometimes I feel that what midwives are really, really skilled at, at is at doing nothing, which is an extremely difficult thing to do. And I think sometimes we don't learn because our societies teach us that doing something is always the right thing. And so I think what we need to do is to try to well use the evidence. I think the evidence is really extremely strong. So use the evidence, maybe have exchanges, try to have exchanges between countries where we try to learn from each other and, and, and get tips from each other on how we can try to keep the art and science of midwifery, because it is both an art and a science. And uh, maybe even s specifically look at those countries where the medicalization is strongest and, and try to find out how we could specifically support that country with all these kinds of ways, like exchanges, evidence, and see if we can make a difference and use the, that example for another country. But I think the evidence actually is one that is extremely strong at the moment, and we really need to say it out loud altogether, because I think it really does support women to get the best care. But it is a difficult one. I think it is it is one that's extremely challenging and just as challenging as those women who don't don't get any care. I mean, it is very strange that in the world and sometimes even within one country, I think the United States is a very good example where you see maternal mortality rising and you, you know, the, our world is changing. And sometimes within the same country, you can have the poorest and the richest and you see it reflected in maternal mortality. And uh, you'll find that, yes, I know that black women in, in the United States often get very, very little inappropriate care. And at the same time, uh, other women get highly medicalized care, which is just as inappropriate. So, yeah, I think we need to learn, try to learn from each other and pinpoint those countries where the medicalization is uh, the, the biggest. and and link that country or find ways in which you can support those midwives to regain the art and science of their of, of midwifery. Thank you, Franca. Any other questions? I see Celine is saying evidence based medicine needs to be constructed a little bit. It often just confirms the status quo which is another way of saying midwifery needs to do its own fine research about yeah, what birth really can be like. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think we are doing our own research. And sadly, we know that it often research and, and academia is also politicized and we need to stick to our guns. Agreed. All right, Jane has put up a link in the chat box to our posters. We want to remind you all 
um, to look at the posters. So we have this long 24 hours, and it's almost as if the party's over. Now what do you do? Well, if you need a gradual withdrawal, go back and check the posters. Franca, we want to thank you so much, so, so much for participating with our virtual International Day of the Midwives today. And can I just be a little cheeky and say, as somebody from the United States, I'm so proud to be represented by such an articulate and compassionate president in my career. <laughs> thank you so much, but the honor is all mine. It uh, feels wonderful to be allowed to do it. Actually, every day I think, why me? <laughs> thank you. Well, <laughs> we thank you for taking the time from your career and your family to lead the ICM and us, Franca. Thank you so much. And